Dear learners, greetings from IIT Guwahati. We are in the MOOCs course that is Advanced Thermodynamics and Combustions. Today we are going to start the second module and the title of this module is Entropy and Exergy. So, the list of topics under this module will be covered mainly we will be focusing on entropy which is one of the consequence or you can say the statement from the second law. Other option is that we are going to discuss uh, something on exergy that means this is the another form of uh, representation of energy that is exergy which says what is the maximum amount of exergy what a system can have considering the potential of the systems. So, on this uh, module there will be 6 lectures. So, let us start the first uh, lecture today that is entropy analysis part 1. So, in this uh, entropy analysis we are going to discuss the following topics that is Clausius theorem and second law of thermodynamics. Prior to this we have already discussed exhaustively about the first law, zeroth law, first law and second law and here we will be giving specific emphasis, emphasis to second law just to define the property which is known as entropy. Then uh, we are going to discuss about the entropy and second law, what is the, what is the link in between and since it is a entropy then we must evaluate this entropy. So, what are the possible methods what we have to calculate the um, entropy of a system. Now, one of the fundamental diagrams based on the entropy is the temperature entropy diagram. This is similar to the very basic concept when you del dealt with the first law, uh, we talk about work and this work transfer was expressed in terms of uh, P um, pressure volume diagram or P V diagram. And, it, and this P V diagram is uh, used for work transfer and since the second law talks about heat, so we must include that what diagram will talk about the heat transfer from a system. So, that is nothing but your temperature entropy diagram. And in the second law that it also introduced the concept of inequality that means entropy um, or work transfer uh, can increase or decrease. So, that is uh, it is not possible the complete conversion of heat to work. So, in order to make it equal then we need to introduce some topics or some restrictions and those restrictions will be covered in the name of reversibility and irreversibility and they have both reversibility and the irreversibility are definite bearing for the uh, parameter entropy. So, uh, let us start the, uh, the first segment of this today's lecture that is Clausius theorem and second law. Uh, prior to this we have discussed about the second law in two forms one is Kelvin Planck statement and Clausius statement. And this Clausius statement the another consequence of the second law is nothing but the Clausius theorem. What does that Clausius theorem uh, is all about we are going to explain. Uh, to start with first thing I just first we can introduce that when you talk about this work diagram it is normally represented in terms of generalized force versus generalized displacements. So, if you look at this particular figure you can see that a we can there is a circle or it can say uh, or you can say there are uh, many points we can find out many points on this circle. And this uh, thermodynamically we can represent it, it as a closed cycle that means a system can undergo in a closed cycle or, or in other words we can talk of a cyclic systems. So, here the smooth co closed curve we call this as a reversible cycles that means we can choose any direction any path system and find out the uh, and when you do this. Uh, we can arrive the all the properties based on the um, this diagram that is based on the force and the displacements we can represent the work diagram. And one interesting thing is that mathematically we can view 
this entire uh, uh, carp or this closed carp in a multiple number of zigzag paths. So, this zigzag path can be represented as uh, uh, you can see here one particular path can be A, B, C, D, other path can be E, F, G, H and uh, uh, side by side you can have multiple number of zigzag path or you can say rather you can say infinite number of zigzag path and these are nothing but uh, and these zig zigzag paths we can construct with a concept of Carnot cycle. What does this mean that we can imagine this particular reversible cycle with, with multiple or infinite number of reversible processes that involves alternate reversible isothermal process and reversible adiabatic process which means this is nothing but the processes that are involved in a Carnot cycles. So, for example, uh, one can split this entire closed curve in a cycle like A, B, C, D. So, in a A, B, C, A, B, uh, A, B, C, D is one particular Carnot cycle, E, F, G, H is another cycles and in each cycles we can imagine some heat is we can say that there are some heat is getting added, some heat is getting rejected and so on. So, this, this is nothing but your work diagrams and we will find its significance in the subsequent slides. What we will talk about what is the relation between this Q1 and T1. Maybe when you talk about Q1 it is happening at constant temperature process. Now, when you are talking about BC process it is nothing but a reversible adiabatic process. And uh, so, this uh, uh, to summarize this what you can say that these isothermal and adiabatic processes are represented by various diagrams and the work done in all reversible paths is between the same states is the same that is the consequence that we derived earlier. And moreover another important uh, point that to, is to be noted is that no two adiabatic lines can intersect so that infinite adiabatic strips is possible. That means, these adiabatic strips you can uh, they cannot in, uh, at any point of time they cannot inter intersect and so we can have any adiabatic strips. So, likewise the complete process can uh, uh, complete process on this work diagram can be represented by infinite number of Carnot cycles. Uh, this is one part now let us talk about uh, uh, one particular segment of this uh, um, of this closed curve. So, what I can say if you take one particular segment in which a system undergoes a change of state from its initial state i to a final state f and this is nothing but a reversible process. So, you can say path i f is a reversible process, but if you want to uh, represent this particular path in terms of Carnot cycles. So, what I can draw I can uh, from po at point i I can uh, draw a line or, or adiabatic line and, and point f also I can draw another adiabatic line and then from this particular and one particular point that is uh, on this adiabatic line which passes through the initial point we can also draw another path a b which is nothing but an isothermal path. So, in other words what I can say that the initial state when the system undergoes a change of states from its initial state to i to f, then what happens? We can uh, as well say that this is a path process i f, but side by side we can also represent that uh, similar uh, path we can e construct like i a b f. So, what does this mean? In a such a way that area under the path i f is also equal to area under the um, path i a b f. So, in a sense we have represented this particular any reversible path with respect to a Carnot cycle. So, that under this area if you um, under this area if these two are uh, these two areas are equal then we can frame this relations like for you can use the first law for the process i f. So, you can write uh, i f is equal to 
q i f is equal to u f minus u i that is change in the internal energy minus w i f that means work transfer during this path i f. Now, same equation we are going to use for the path i a b f which means that I can write it as q i a b f is equal to u f minus u i u f minus u i is nothing but the internal energy change at the final and initial state and it will remain same. So, this factor always will remain same because this is change in internal energy and it is a point functions. So, from these two equations we can say that if you have reversible paths like one in a Carnot cycle other is uh, other is like any reversible path. So, you can say W i f is equal to W a i a b f or similarly we can say q i f is equal to q i a b f. So, it is a very important consequence that says that work transfer and heat transfer among all reversible paths are same. So, the in a reversible process the temperature may change in any manner, but it is as you, as you always find to possible a reversible zigzag path consisting of adiabatic and isotherms, and but the heat transfer between isothermal segment is same as that of original process. Okay. So, now that particular consequence again we are going to revisit the diagram work diagram and we try to see uh, another type of relations and in fact, this will talk about nothing but your Clausius theorem. So, what has been uh, found by the Clausius is that uh, we are choosing two isothermal processes that is one is A B at temperature T 1 other is we can uh, find out another uh, isothermal process that is C D at temperature 2 T 1 and T 2. So, basically we are talking about a cycle A B C D in which Q 1 amount of heat is being transferred through the process A B at temperature T 1 and this process is isothermal and Q 2 is heat is rejected at temperature T 2 and for this particular cycle a particular relation always holds cool that is for the cycle A B C D we have found that we can found that Q 1 by T 1 plus Q 2 by T 2 is equal to 0. Okay. Now, you repeat the same thing for all subsequent um, cycles like we can think about a cycle E F G H in which Q 3 is added at temperature T 3 and Q 2 is Q 4 is rejected at temperature T 4. So, in for this process we can write also another expression Q 3 by T 3 plus Q 4 by T 4 is equal to 0. So, likewise we can think about uh, multiple number of segments consisting of uh, alternate reversible isotherms and adiabats and frame and equations such that it can be written as q 1 by t 1 plus q 2 by t 2 plus q 3 by t 3 and so on is equal to 0. So, this entire expression may be summarized in terms of summations that is q j by t j with summation of j is equal to 0. Now, we have we have um, um, expressed this path in a discrete manner and if it has to happen in a continuous manner that means, if these strips are very close. So, these steps can be represented in terms of integrations. So, this integration that means, a parameter which is defined that is d q and this d q is nothing but this uh, is very small heat transfer in a re and that is reversible heat transfer by t is equal to 0. So, what we can summarize? that when a cycle is imagined to be consist, consist of large number of strips with adiabatic curves close to each other with isothermal curves connecting them, the process becomes infinitesimally small as if the original cycle is bounded by two adiabatic curves and such a cycle is reversible. And based on this logic, 
Clausius framed a theorem which called as Clausius theorem. It states that the cyclic integral of the parameter d q by t and this is nothing but this uh, integral term here is 0 for a reversible process. So, this is a another consequence and the another mathematical statement for the second law of thermodynamics. Now, let us find more details on what is this d q by t. Uh, so, if you uh, again uh, generalize this in another viewpoint like we have a another figure that talks about for example, uh, there may be any thermodynamic processes. So, you have some initial states i and some final states f that means, these are the state points or thermodynamic coordinates on a general work diagram. Now, what we are do going to do is talk about is that we are going from initial state to final state in one of any one reversible path. So, R 1 is one, one such reversible path, but we are returning again uh, we are not returning again same path, but we are again returning in another reversible path. So, R 1 R 2 is nothing but their reversible paths. So, uh, so the Clausius uh, uh, um, theorem we can write that cyclic integral for the path R 1 and R 2 must be equal to 0. So, you can write this you can split this that since we are from system initial state i we are going to uh, the go to, we are going to the final state f. So, for which the reversibility transfer is q d q r d q and uh, that divided by t that you are that integral we are taking in the path r 1. Similarly, another expression we can um, say write from final state to initial state we are going to for the path 2. Now, if you uh, from this equations we can rewrite that means, in this equation uh, that initial and final states are now reversed. So, the minus sign comes here because, because this uh, here we have final state now it becomes initial states. So, because of this there is a negative sign here. So, you can rewrite this equation in this form. Now, when you do this one interesting thing again we can frame out that now if you just uh, differentiate what happens in a reversible path and what happens uh, what happens in two different reversible path. What we can see that cyclic integral d of d q by t one of the reversible path is r 1 and the cyclic integral in another reversible path is r 2 and likewise we can keep on writing multi infinite number of uh, reversible path r 2, r 3, r 4 and r n. So, one interesting thing is that the parameter which is d q by t it remains constant that integral of that parameter remains constant. And since it is constant and what is remains fixed that we have we have fixed our initial state and final state nothing is fixed only initial and final state which is fixed. Now, when such a thing is depend when a such a parameter is dependent on the state points then we call this as a property. And this property uh, what we call this as a entropy change that is S f minus S i and this is uh, this is a, a point function or it is a it is not uh, path dependent, but it is a point function it depends on the initial state and the final state. Now, let us have a more clear understanding of this uh, what the Clausius said is that there exists a function of thermodynamic coordinates of the system whose value at the final state minus its value at the initial states represents the cyclic integral d q by t for any reversible path between i and f. And this function is denoted as entropy and this concept of entropy is demonstrated by Clausius in 1865. But one of the remarkable consequence what you can see here is that entropy change of the system is independent of the path rather it depends on the point i and f. But, but although there can be a heat transfer that means, heat can come out of the system or it can be enter into the systems they are path dependent, but the entropy change does not depend on the path. So, the concept of this existence of entropy is interpreted in a similar manner 
as that of internal energy functions. So, first law introduced the concept of internal energy function. In a similar sense, we can also define the function which is entropy functions. This entropy so change shows the certain quantity is independent of the choice of the reversible processes connecting the initial and final equilibrium state as a consequence of second law of thermodynamics. Since uh, both uh, a u and a s are state functions, they are evaluated from the initial and final states and they are independent on path connecting between the states. Uh, now, that change in the entropy if you uh, if the state points are very near, so that they are infinitesimally near, then we can S f minus S i we can write it as a d s. So, basically uh, we are representing this entropy change in a very uh, uh, infinitesimally small process that is d s is equal to d q r by t. Here I have denoted r because this q r is nothing but it is a reversible heat transfer and in fact and is a consequence that this t has to be represented in terms of absolute temperatures and this is again the corollary of the Carnot theorem. So, one thing we can see is that when you talk about d q r is equal to t d s. So, this is another important significance which has close relevance with respect to work transfers. So, when you say reversible work transfer we write it as a p d v, when you say reversible heat transfer you write it as a t d s. So, these two things makes us, makes us the uh, uh, our understanding simple uh, to talk about heat and work transfer in a particular process. So, I mentioned earlier that uh, we talk about entropy, but next question is that how you are going to evaluate the entropy and we already mentioned that the uh, uh, entropy is a uh, state functions and it is independent of the path and one thing you can say that if you if you recall this particular equation d s is equal to d q r by t here this d q r is a inexact differential that is what that uh, the line is always kept for this d. So, this is an inexact differential whereas, that inexact differential when divided by absolute temperature it gives an exact differential. So, this is a uh, one of the mathematical consequence that how it happens and since this happens that is the reason that one case d q r is a path dependent, but whereas d s is a path independent. So, with this logic so instead of looking at q r alone we can also talk about the property entropy for a therm any thermodynamic systems. Uh, likewise, for any systems we evaluate the thermodynamic properties based on states in a similar way we have to explore that how we can find the property that is entropy for any thermodynamic processes. So, one simplest formulation that can be made is for ideal gas. So, for an ideal gas we can write the basic equations P V is equal to N R T where n stands for number of moles and uh, these equations can be rewritten as p in a differential form p d v plus v d p is equal to n r d t. Then we from our previous understandings we can recall this definitions that is heat capacity specific heat as at constant volume in terms of d u by d t at constant b. We also know that c p is equal to c v plus n r then we also know u is equal to h minus p v u and that means u uh, internal energy and enthalpy the h minus p v. So, from this we can so this the, these equations can be used in the first law to evaluate the property entropy how. So, first thing is that we can come back the, we can replace this d q in terms of d s and then we can replace d u in terms of d h then P d V will get cancelled. So, ultimately we get an expression uh, d s is equal to C p times d t by t minus b by t d p or in other words uh, uh, that is also in terms of pressure we can write in terms of and when you say b by t the v by t is nothing but your n r by p. 
So, from this this particular equations can be integrated to find the absolute entropy. Okay. And this absolute uh, since it is a uh, any arbitrary integral, so there is a term S0 and that term S0 uh, we call this as a in terms of integration we call this as a constant. In our thermodynamic viewpoint we call this as a reference entropy. So, always for any kind of uh, systems when we always evaluate the change which we have to change at we have to see this change or reference value with respect to a uh, uh, with respect to certain pressure and temperatures and in our case it is the atmospheric conditions that is close to 0.1 mega Pascal and 298 Kelvin where for entropy of any gas is calculated. So, if you take this S0 this side, so always we write S minus S0. So, S minus S0 we express in terms of C p ln t uh, minus n r uh, ln p. Now, when you look at this change of entropy and this change of entropy between a one particular state to another state obviously, this S 0 will is going to be eliminated. Now, let us see how we can talk about this entropy evaluation or change of uh, entropy uh, in a another workable uh, expressions. So, let us recall that the entropy change can be represented in two expressions d s uh, one is in terms of C p other in term is in terms of C v. D s is equal to C p times d t by t minus n r d p by p and if you take remove this change with respect to a finite change that is delta s. So, you can integrate this equations from t to, to t f and of course, uh, from uh, p i to p f and of course, here if the if this C p is in not a function of is a function of temperatures, then it has this has to be within the integral if it is not then we can take out this integrals. Similarly, another way of representing this entropy change in terms of C v. So, here here it is C v and other side is instead of p we have n r l n d v by v. So, in a similar way d s can be replaced with delta s. So, these two expressions gives us the workable model or workable uh, expressions to calculate the entropy change. So, by workable model I mean we know uh, uh, the thermodynamic coordinates and in our case either it is a pressure temperature or it is a uh, temperature volume. So, in a both the way if you know both any two parameters then we can also find out the entropy change. Then uh, after this entropy evaluation we are now going to talk about something on temperature entropy diagrams. So, I mentioned that when you talk about uh, work transfer in a PV diagram. So, any process goes from 1 to 2 and we say if you drop normal. So, you can say area under this curve is nothing but work transfer. Then the same logic we are going to say because W is equal to integral of P d V. In a same logic we can represent the temperature diagram and for same process 1 to 2 and our expression shows that this uh, q r is nothing but or q 1 2 integral of t d s. So, when you say integral of t d s, so it means that area under the temperature entropy diagram represent the uh, heat transfer, area under p v diagram it represents the work transfer. Now, on top and here we are going to introduce some terms like if you have this temperature entropy diagrams, we may have a situations where for an isentropic process in a vertical line, other may be an isothermal process in a horizontal line. So, such a process and if you talk about this, this is nothing but your isentropic as you can clearly see there is no area. 
So, it means that in isentropic process your Q is equal to 0 and when you go for an isothermal process this, this diagram will be a rectangle. So, it is a isothermal process and the area under the diagram will be a rectangle. So, to summarize this what you can say area under the diagram represents the heat transfer to or from the systems. The t in a TH diagram an isentropic process is nothing but a vertical line and we call this as isentrope and this isothermal process is referred as a isotherm. And why it is important because it is particularly convenient for representing all idealized cycles of heat engines. Now, moving further there are some other viewpoints like how uh, how this temperature entropy diagram is again linked with the Carnot cycles. So, for example, if you have some initial state I to F and you are going this in a one of the reversible path R 1 and another reversible path R 2, there may be infinite number of reversible path possibilities. But however, uh, and as you can say uh, the network uh, uh, for this cycle will be nothing but the area under this closed curve. Network uh, sorry net heat transfer during this process will be the area under the closed curve. Now, in one of the important thing is that we can talk about Carnot cycle like talking about the two upper limits and we can draw a rectangle. So, the upper temp limit of temperature is this. So, I can say A B line we can draw a isotherm another line which is DC which is the lowest point on this curve. So, I can talk about another line. So, A B C D is nothing but a Carnot cycle consisting of two reversible isothermal processes and two reversible adiabatic process. However, we have this R 1 and R 2 they are nothing but the reversible path or reversible processes. So, once you know the heat transfer from this T s diagram we can easily calculate the work transfers then thermal efficiency for the engine can be evaluated. Again moving further some important significance for any entropy diagram we can draw. So, I have already demonstrated what is an isentrope constant entropy line in a T s diagram, what is an isotherm which is a constant temperature line in a T s diagram and there are other processes like we can have a isochoric process. So, your volume is equal to constant. So, this course goes in this manner there are isobaric process where pressure remains constant. We can also talking talk about an adiabatic process we can talk, talk about adiabatic process where uh, Q is equal to 0 whether it is not an isentropic, but it is a adiabatic process. We can also talk about polytropic process. All these processes can be talked about by giving the definition P V to the power n is equal to constant. So, this part I have already mentioned be based on the exponent n we this path can be specified. But one more thing important thing is that if you recall our expressions of entropy in terms of C p and in, norm, in terms of D m C b for specifically for isochoric process and isobaric process one important consequence it gives that for an isobaric process we say d p is equal to 0. So, this particular expression now becomes d t by d s at constant pressure is t by C p. And similarly for an isochoric process when d v is equal to 0. So, d t by d s at constant volume is t by C v. So, what it says is that d t by d s is nothing but the slope of this diagram. So, if it is a constant pressure process or it is a whether it is a constant volume process. So, the slope of the constant pressure and constant volume process on a T s diagram is independent on the nature of the systems. So, here you can say T is your absolute temperature, C v is your 
property, a specific heat capacity of the medium. So, for uh, and and these are independent on any other nature of the hydrostatic systems. Now, let us talk some uh, something on entropy which has relation with respect to reversibility. So, we have mentioned here that uh, there may be infinite number of reversible processes that we can uh, view and for that we can say and in, e in each process we can calculate the entropy change. What important significance is that we are talking about entropy of two things one is entropy change for the systems and entropy change of the surroundings and change of entropy of system and surrounding will consist and will will talk uh, will give us the change in this uh, entropy of for the universe so this is exactly what we are going to find out that wha, uh, what 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 is the meaning of the sum of these entropy changes or in other words we are going to say that the physical meaning of entropy and significance of this all entropy changes can be estimated so, for example, if you consider a reservoir that absorbs Q amount of heat at temperature T from any systems, so you can say that entropy change of the uh, um, is recognized as Q by T. Now, for that is for the systems, we can also say that what happens to entropy change of the universe. So, a system, if you have a system and we have the surroundings. So, both constitutes this universe. So, what we are looking at that for example, we are considering a process which is accompanied by flow of heat between a system and a set of reservoirs consisting from T i to T f. So, we can say that as if we have a system and there are some reservoirs R 1, R 2, R 3 and so on. And this of course, all the reservoirs are within the surroundings. So, what we do is that system undergoes a change of state from T i to T f. Now, the final stage happens in a multiple number of steps that means, first the system interacts with reservoir 1, so, next it is it, it interacts with reservoir 2 and next it interacts with reservoir 3 and in this process it has delta S 1, delta S 2 and delta S 3. So, all these things are entropy change when the system is um, un undergoes the reservoir 1, 2, 3 and there may be many number of reservoirs like this and in th through the process what changes happen the system undergoes from T i to T f. But in this process through this process there are also change in the entropy for reservoir 1, 2, 3. So, summing of all these things we will talk about the total change in the entropy of the inverse. So, we will now calculate uh, uh, how we are going to evaluate it. So, for that we are talking about two situations like uh, in one case your uh, this system and there is a reservoir. So, we will consider only one reservoir in this case. So, here heat is absorbed by the system that means, I am taking heat from the reservoir. So, heat is absorbed by this system. So, we say d q r. In another situations we can have a reservoir and we have system. So, here heat is rejected from the systems. So, we say it is a minus d q r. So, from this what we can say this is nothing but d s of system and this is nothing but 
d s of reservoir. Similarly, here delta s of system or d s of system and d s of reservoir. So, one case it is negative. So, in this case when it heat is rejected by the system is negative, when it heat is um, enters into the system it is positive. So, based on that one can have uh, appropriately use the positive and negative signs and con that uh, and finally, we can calculate the entropy change of the universe in both the cases and it happens to be 0 because all are reversible path and it entropy change of the universe is 0. So, in a reversible process the change in the entropy is always 0. So, this is the consequence that we can make that when a reversible process is performed the entropy of the universe remains unchanged. Now, when you say a process undergoes a reversible path we can say that we can calculate this entropy, but there are situations that always reversible path is not possible. So, we have to rely on all natural processes and they are mostly irreversible. So, what we can uh, view this particular analysis is that, so in, in order to analyze a irreversible path or in order to introduce a concept of BP reversibilities, what has been done is that first you write the expressions for entropy change that is S f minus S i that is final state minus S i initial state is the cyclic integral of d q r by t which is d q r is nothing but your reversible heat transfer. Now, same expressions can be used for irreversible path with some change like. So, when I say a process changes from one uh, say temperature entropy diagram let us say it goes from a reversible process. So, 1 to 2. Now, if same process if I want to have it maintaining initial state and final state same if this let us say it is reversible path R 1. So, in a reversible path your initial state and final state are always uh, in equilibrium at the same time all intermediate states are also in therm or are also in thermodynamic equilibrium. But what happens if it is an irreversible path we can only assume that state initial state and final state they are in equilibrium. So, this continuous curve we normally represented in a in a dotted line. So, that we can say that in a process 1 to 2 we can take either from 1 to 2 and also from 2 to 1 we can travel. So, in both way the uh, process can occur, but whereas in a irreversible path the process can occur only in one directions. So, same expression uh, uh, same uh, states if I represent 1 and 2, so I normally represent in a dotted line and this is nothing but your irreversible path. So, it means that process can occur only from 1 to 2 not from 2 to 1. So, this is the basic difference, but in terms of end results what we are assuming as if this initial states and final states are in equilibrium and what we do each year we can calculate the heat transfer from 1 to 2. So, we can write it as a d q, but uh, this but this is not a reversible heat transfer, but the path is as if we are calculating this for an uh, for a reversible process. So, r we are putting it here that as if this value is calculated for an reversible process. Now, let us see what happens these two numbers. So, already we proved that entropy change for the universe uh, is 0 for all the reversible process. Now, we are going to calculate what happens for irreversible processes. Now, these irreversible processes are nothing but your natural processes and they can be categorized in four segments. One processes exhibiting external mechanical irreversibility, processes that case 2 processes that exhibit internal mechanical irreversibility that means external means 
outside of the system or surrounding gets affected processes that exhibit internal mechanical uh, irreversibility that means only internal structure of the system or internal change of the system happens processes that exhibit external thermal irreversibility so it's a both are mechanical and this is a thermal that means that means outside uh, only thermal change has pos has happened and last one is processes that exhibit chemical irreversibility so all these processes we are now going to uh, um, discuss so first one is processes that exhibit uh, external mechanical irreversibility so it there are some processes there are two categories of the process one is isothermal dissipation of work uh, through a systems in which uh, the uh, the work which remains on strain that changes into internal change of the reservoir so and here there is no change in the entropy of the systems because the thermodynamic coordinates do not change but uh, um, change of entropy for the reservoir so typical examples are like so if you look at this first law you start with a first law dq is equal to du plus dw and we say it's a process is isothermal process so q is equal to w because du is equal to 0 and when q is equal to 0 we can write dq is equal to tds so we can write delta s of the reservoir as w by t and delta of the system is 0 because system is Mm, mm, uh, there is no change in the internal change of the system because thermodynamic coordinates do not change. So, that delta S universe can be calculated as W by T. In another case same change of state happens, but the process and we call this as external mechanical irreversibility, but the process involves adiabatic dissipation of work. So, the same equation can be used, but with a viewpoint that uh, this delta s systems we can calculate because the system undergoes an adiabatic change from final states to initial states. So, we can calculate this uh, delta s systems as C p times L n T f by T i and the surrounding delta s surrounding is 0 because since the process is adiabatic no change in the change of heat transfer to the uh, surroundings there is no change of flow of heat to the surroundings. So, from this we can calculate again delta S of the universe system plus delta S of the surroundings we can calculate. So, typical examples there uh, that involve the friction from the rubbing of insulated liquids, inelastic deformations, uh, irregular stirring of viscous liquids there are multiple examples in this category. In another case that involve the transformation of internal energy of the systems in an adiabatic wall into mechanical energy and then back to the um, energy internal energy again. So, this this process calls us ok. So, this is uh, this is an another example where uh, again adiabatic the processes that occur that exhibit internal mechanical irreversibility other case was the external mechanical irreversibility and this case was internal mechanical irreversibility. So, internal uh, we, and this uh, they are characterized uh, by the fact that the transformation of internal energy of the system uh, is done which are enclosed by closed adiabatic wall. What it means is that now let us talk about one particular example ideal gas rushing to the vacuum and such a process we call this as a pre expansion. What we have is that we can have an adiabatic enclosure and one side and there and there are there is a partition and one side we have vacuum and we have other side we have some gas. So, what happens here that the gas when the partition is removed the gas suddenly rushes into the vacuum. So, what happens here the volume of the gas changes 
from initial volume V i to final volume V f. But in this process what happens to the surroundings because since it is an adiabatic ex enclosure, so, so there is no change in the uh, entropy for delta surround um, for universe because q is equal to 0. And because of this reason what happens uh, we can revisit our basic equations d q is equal to d u plus d w and, and this d q r we can by t because is equal to then if you divide this by t then we can write uh, d q r by t is equal to p by t into d v because d u is also 0 here. Now, from these equations we can use this ideal gas equations and to frame out the entropy change of the systems then we have entropy change of the surrounding is 0 and finally, we can calculate summing it of entropy change of the system and surroundings and here we will find that entropy change of this universe is n r l n v f by v i. So, from this equation you can say that v f is always greater than v i. So, delta s inverse will be always greater than 0. The third case which is nothing but the processes that exhibit external thermal irreversibility. So, these processes involve the transfer of heat by virtue of finite temperature difference. So, typical example is that conduction uh, or radiation of heat from the system to a cooler surroundings or conduction of radiation of heat that remain um, from a hot reservoir to a cooler one. So, in this case what happens if you take an particular examples we have some q units of heat which is conducted from hot reservoir at T 1 to a cooler reservoir at T 2. So, from this case for hot reservoirs it takes the heat transfer takes place so it is heat rejection. So, it is minus q 1 by T 1 because hot reservoir is at temperature T 1 and similarly for cold reservoir we can write it is, it is absorbing. So, it is plus q by T 2 and from this we can find out the delta ent entropy change of the universe. So, here obviously we can say it is q by T 2 minus q by T 1 since T 2 is less than T 1. So, entropy of the universe is always greater than 0 and last one is a processes which is exhibit chemical irreversibility. So, what happens now you are moving into entropy change in a chemical process that could be a diffusion process that could be a, a freezing or condensation process that could be a mixing or solutions or osmosis process or any chemical reactions. And one typical example we can say that diffusion of two dissimilar metals. So, this is just a situation analysis what you do for the entropy analysis for case 2 where we said that there is a gas and here I can putting instead of gas 1 I can put it as a gas 1, gas 2. There are many gases like this and there is a partition here and it is adiabatically closed that means there is no heat transfer. So, here and this side also a vacuum and with some chemical reaction has happened because of which pressure has changed and all these gases rushes into this. So, that particular things case 1 which can visualize as if it is a multiple number of expansions and that expansions are nothing but in an um, that happens in an adiabatic enclosure with chambers of equal volume. So, likewise we can find out for gas A what happens to entropy change for gas B what happens to the entropy change. So, this is the system for total change of the systems then total change of the surrounding is 0 because there is no there is no q or q is equal to 0. Then we can find out the entropy change of the universe and here also entropy change of the universe it has been found there all it is always greater than 0. Now, what we have discussed so far if you can summarize that there are 4 particular cases cases with external mechanical irreversibility, internal mechanical irreversibility, external thermal irreversibility and chemical irreversibility. 
and for all these cases we have summarized what happens to the entropy change of the systems, entropy change of the surroundings and summation of the these two will give you the entropy change of the universe. So, it it and all for all the cases one important consequence is that delta s universe is always greater than 0 or it is always positive. So, this is the first consequence that when you calculate entropy for an irreversible, irreversible process and for universe it is always a positive quantity. And but when the when you talk about entropy change of the universe for a reversible process it is always 0. So, now we are end of this particular lecture. So, I will try to solve one simple problems just to give what what is our understanding. So, the first problem is, uh, um, uh, is about uh, the calculation of entropy change and to visualize the concept of uh, concept of a reversible process. How a process can be reversible heated, reversibly heated. So, one typical example which is given here that there is a unit mass of water which is at 0 degree centigrade, it is brought to contact with a heat reservoir at 100 degree centigrade. So, what we can see here is that we have a set of water or in this case I can say we have a unit mass of water which is available to us at 0 degree centigrade and we want to calculate the first case that when the water reaches to the reservoir temperature and this case it is 100 degree centigrade what will be the entropy change of the universe. So, basically your system will be water and there is a reservoir. So, water is at 0 degree centigrade, reservoir is at 100 degree centigrade. So, I can say it is 273 Kelvin and it is 373 Kelvin. Then the water is in contact with reservoir. So, obviously, heat will enter from the reservoir to water. So, we can calculate the how, what is the heat absorbed by this. We can say Q is equal to m C p times delta T. So, Q that comes from the reservoir can be calculated. So, m is equal to 1 and here we can write for C p for water 4.187 kilojoule per kg Kelvin and delta T is 100 degree Kelvin. So, we can say 1 into 4.187 into 100. So, this turns out to be 418.7 kilojoule. Now, we have to now find out entropy change. So, first we have to find out what is delta S for water? Delta S for water, we can write water goes from 273 to 373. So, we can integrate this dq by t and dq is m c p dt. So, we can say m c p times integral of dt by t. This integration has to be performed from 273 to 373 and this is nothing but your ln t. So, m c p ln t that has to be evaluated from 273 to 373. So, this value will be like delta s w we can write as uh, 1.305 kilo joule per Kelvin. Now, delta s for reservoir we can write is nothing but uh, minus q by t because the reservoir lost the heat and this is 4187.7 divided by temperature is 373. So, this number is minus 1.122 kilo joule per Kelvin. So, finally, we can say what is delta S of universe 
by adding these two delta s w plus delta s reservoir. So, this number will be 0 0.183 kilo joule per Kelvin. So, you can see this delta s universe is greater than 0. So, this is the first part of the problem. Now, we can move to the second part. So, in the second part what happens? This, uh, this heating takes place in two stages, first with, uh, uh, fifth, with a 50 degree centigrade heat reservoir and second with the 100 degree centigrade of heat reservoir. So, these two stages of heatings will change the entropy of the water. How we can write this particular integration as uh, d q by t and that from 273 to 50 degree centigrade will be 323 Kelvin, 323 plus integral of d q by t from 323 to 100 degree centigrade that is 373. And this when you evaluate will be uh, you can write d q is equal to uh, m c p d t. So, we can take the integration. So, this turns out to be 4.187. So, here we can say m is equal to 1 kg. So, this can be written in this manner. Uh, ln 323 divided by 273 plus ln 373 divided by 323. Now, after evaluating, you can find delta S w is 1.305. E But delta S R 1 that is reservoir 1 is minus q by T 1 and this is nothing but minus 4.187 q is C p is 1 per C p is this uh, 323 minus 373 3 minus 273 divided by T 1 is absolute temperature at T 1 it is temperature at 1 is 323 and for that number is minus 0 0.647 kilo joule per Kelvin. Similarly, delta S reservoir 2 would be minus 0 0.56 kilo joule per Kelvin. So, when you sum it together, so delta S universe would be 0 0.098 kilo joule per Kelvin. So, what we see is that when you do this heating in stepped manner that is one with 50 degree centigrade then 200 degree centigrade entropy change of the universe is less. In this case it was 0 0.183 now it is 0 0.098. So, it means water is reversibly, if it, if it if water is reversibly heated almost there will not be no change in the entropy. So, the third part of the question says that how the water can be reached, water temperature can be reached to 100 degree centigrade with almost no change in the entropy of the universe. So, if you, that means if you make this water to be in contact with reservoir in with uh, very small uh, infinitesimally small change in the temperatures, then we can say the water is reversibly heated. Now, in the next problem we will talk about uh, some definition of uh, different thermodynamic properties for an adiabatic process. So, the problem statement goes that a fluid undergoes a reversible adiabatic compressions that from point initial state 0.8 mega Pascal and initial volume 0 0.03 and final volume 0 0.05 
0 0.05 meter cube and it undergo follow the loss v b to the power 1.3 is constant. To, to do this what we can draw first is p v diagram that talks about this path and the process goes from 1 to 2 and it is p v to the power 1.3 is equal to constant. So, we can say p 1 v 1 to the power 1.3 is equal to p 2 sorry I will write it as n where n is 1.3 p 2 v to the power n is equal to constants. So, we know p 1.8 mega Pascal v 1 0 0.2 meter cube v 2 0 0.05 meter cube. Then from this equations we can find out p 2 is p 1 into v 1 by v 2 to the power n. So, all these numbers we know. So, this will give you what is p 2? p 2 will be 4.848 mega Pascal. So, we know p 2, we know p 1, we know v 2, we have all the parameters. Then we have to recall d h is equal to uh, sorry t d s equation t d s is equal to d h minus v d p. So, in this this is a reversible adiabatic process. So, this goes to 0. So, we can find out d h is equal to v d p. So, from this we can find out heat transfer that is uh, enthalpy transfer H 2 minus H 1 is equal to integral of V d p from 1 to 2. Now, V we can write as integral of 1 to 2 P 1 V 1 to the power n divided by P and uh, d p. Now, when you do this integral we can say that H 2 minus H 1 as n times P 2 v 2 minus p 1 v 1 to the power n minus 1. Okay. So, this is the expression of enthalpy where and here we have n is 1.3 p 1 v 1 p 2 v 2 all are known. So, we can find out h 2 minus h 1 is 357 kilo joule. So, enthalpy knows then we can find out internal energy. Then we can uh, u 2 minus u 1. u 2 minus u 1 is h 2 minus h 1 minus p 2 v 2 minus p 1 v 1 whole bracket. So, we can find out u 2 minus u 1 as 274.6 kilo joules. So, enthalpy known internal energy known. Entropy d s or h 2 minus s 1 that is equal to 0 because it is an reversible adiabatic process. Heat transfer now q 1 2 also 0 because adiabatic. Then next is work transfer So, it is nothing but W 1 2 is equal to Q 1 2 minus delta U. So, delta U we already know here. So, Q 1 2 is 0. So, we can say W 1 2 becomes minus 274.6 negative sign of this kilo joule per kg sorry kilo joule. Okay. So, the from this problem this gives the basic definition for a given process how this properties value can be evaluated. So, with this I conclude this lecture for today. Thank you for your attention.